Okay, so if you're president, what would you do? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of things I'd, I'd like to do. You know, it's like, what can you realistically, you know, get done? Uh, you gotta, you know, fight. What can you accomplish? Well, yeah, you gotta, you know, choose the battles that you have a shot at winning, you know? Um, obviously, uh, universal. What would be the first thing? I think the first thing would probably, you know, gotta bring the troops home. Hmm. Gotta bring them home. Uh, it's just, it's just senseless at this point. Like right away? Uh, well, you know, I mean, there's, there's differing opinions on it, but you just gotta get them home, you know? I mean, look, I, I mean, at this point, it, it's gotten to the point where we're losing lives uh, for the sake of what, you know? Um, now, if we could at least suck up some of their oil before we bring them home, at least get a little something out of it, hey, that'd be great. That's just sort of like a free That'd be interesting. Bit. Yeah. And then, so let's say we accomplish that, then what would be maybe the next thing? Uh, you know, being sort of a, of a democratic mindset, you know, I definitely think universal health coverage uh, would be a, a key component. Um, I mean, the, the highs and lows of society in this nation are so, I mean, the lows are so low, the highs are so high, and like being the richest nation in the world, you know, we should have uh, better universal health coverage. Definitely. Definitely. You guys got um, plans. Definitely. Well, again, you know, I mean, that's going to be, I think that's going to be the toughest thing to accomplish. I think bringing the troops home is not, I don't think there's that much to it, you know? So I take, I take it you're ready to vote. If the election was tomorrow, you'd vote right away? Uh, yeah, I'd vote right away. Uh, and yeah. I assume it. Yeah, I'm, the, the I, guy, would, I would probably. Uh, the guy who's going to bring him home. I'll right be honest away. with you, you know, I'll, I'll disclose my deepest, darkest secrets. I was a Hillary, <laughs> I'm a Hillary fan. I always uh -huh. have been. Um, but there are, you know, I mean, sort of take the one who, who uh, I think meets my objectives more so than anyone else. How did you is, feel that went for her, the election, I mean the uh, primary process? I think her campaign uh, made some pretty critical errors. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I think she's also got a stigma about her. What, that, what is that? Well, she, you know, the whole Clinton-esque sort of thing, that she's so intertwined in, in, in big government, in lobbying, in, you know, large donations, whereas Obama... Obama seems to be more the voice of the people, uh, you know, middle class, lower class. Um, aside from his, you know, African American heritage, he just he seems to be more down to earth. Uh, and the truth of the matter is, in front of an audience, uh, Obama's just better than she was, you know. But she was definitely she 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 had that nasty streak about her. She was very um, <laughs> she can be offensive, and uh, I think that's one of the one of the downfalls. What about the uh, Jeremiah Wright? Uh scenario. You know, like anything else, the American people are going to make more about it than, than it really is. You know, I think my only qualm with that is uh, he said um, that this was an isolated thing, that in the 20 years that he'd been a member of that um, congregation, right. that this was an isolated incident. And I just find that hard to believe that after 20 years of being involved in this congregation, this is the first time that Jeremiah Wright had said anything along these lines. So, you know, under that assumption, um, yeah, I'm a little bothered that he didn't make, he didn't take any measures to leave that church prior to this whole incident, mm. you know? I guess that's what kept you in Hillary's camp, too. Well, that, you know, um, I think, I think Obama's a bit of an idealist, you know? I think he's got, home? I don't know, the truth of the matter is he doesn't have a lot of experience being in the executive branch, whereas Hillary, and you've heard people say that she, she said she had experience, and you got to think about the conversations that a president and a first lady have in, at night when they're laying in bed together about their day at work. That might be frightening in this case, right? Well, in this case, you know, he was in bed with several other people simultaneously, so, but that's another story for another or day. Or at his desk or what have you. But again, you know, I mean, you, you know, you talk about, you know, the CEO of a large corporation and his wife, and over the course of eight years, think of all the conversations that went on behind mm -hmm. closed doors. Mm -hmm. uh, how much experience can be, you know, attributed to those conversations? She definitely has more, more executive experience than uh, Obama does. There's no question about it. Um, so outside of that, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of things. Definitely, you know, not overturn. You've got some opinions, though. This is good. Yeah, I'm a realist. I'm a realist, you know. <laughs> definitely don't overturn Roe v. Wade. Um, no. Huh? And that's definitely... Uh, what about, like, the issue, like, as it uh, becomes a late-term uh, scenario? Yeah, no, it definitely... I think it ought to be restrictions I think, on like, that. A, a late-term abortions, I, I, I do. You know, I do. I think at some point... Um, I'm a firm believer that we as a nation can't even take care of all the children walking around on this earth. Mm. I mean, there's, I haven't heard actual stati statistics, but, you know, there's, it's been said that, you know, there's like, you know, several hundred thousand or a couple million children going to bed hungry each night. Let's first worry about those kids well, before we start worrying about the unborn child. So you think like, the, what about the thing that happens in China where people are forced to have uh, abortions for because, reasons uh, because of, of the kind of like that? 
hey, you know, it's like it's the same thing with like gang warfare. I call it population control. If they want to shoot at each other, you know, just leave the innocent victims out of it. But yeah, we're overpopulated. There's no question about well, it. Let me ask you this: um, How about like um, funding? Like, uh, should should <coughs> should uh, the government fund abortions in your estimation, or should abortions well, be made available to? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think if the government and the government fund them. Well, I think that would fall under you know under the universal health care uh -huh. with people who are you know indigent or. Uh, you know, just just can't afford it. I think mm -hmm. I think it should be like all inclusive, like a, a Planned Parenthood thing, where the the woman has options, you uh -huh. know, to either adopt, have the child, you know, adopted, um, or aborted, or whatever. But it, there should, if the government's going to step in and help fund it, there definitely has to be like a full circle counseling sort of environment where it's not the only option, you know, uh, for the good of all parties. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. So I mean, we we can't look at everything black and white. There has to be there has to be a lot of gray area. So I think that's sort of that. Yeah. That's your first year in office though, right? That's just my that's just the you've first couple have, of weeks. You've got two terms. Yeah, I got dude. so I could go on and on and on. <laughs> I mean, God, don't even get me started. Don't get yourself.